shepherd because it tied into my whole Earth Day experience and I thought I could connect with all of us being called uh, to be shepherds of the beautiful creation with which we've been entrusted. And then I opened the gospel for this Sunday and lo and behold, it's another I am statement of Jesus, this time him saying, I am the vine and you are the branches. And I thought, oh, well, that would have even been better for our Earth Day. Um, but then it dawned on me that this, um, this gospel passage has, uh, is very clear about who we are to look after and steward, uh, and it's ourselves. Jesus says, I am the vine and you are the branches. Another place, he says, I've come that you may have life and have in all its fullness. Jesus wants us to be filled with life. God wants us to be healthy and fruit producing. And so we must care for ourselves as well as the rest of creation. And actually, truth be told, some of us are much better at caring for others and the things around us than we are for ourselves. But rather than being a selfish thing, it is uh, living out God's desire and purpose for us that we be rooted, grounded in the vine, in Jesus, which gives us life and fruit. So far from being boastful, um, it's an expectation that we produce fruit. And if we're not, we need to be figuring out how we can cultivate that happening. And as these thoughts were ruminating in my mind, yesterday I was with Mother Heather at the uh, regional confirmations, and I was so struck by how, uh, in addition to the traditional confirmation service and vows that are made, uh, all the kids were invited to come to the microphone and share a portion, a part of scripture, a passage, and to tell us why that passage resonated with them, why they chose it. Um, and as I was hearing that, it was really, you were talking about uh, what connects you to the vine. In fact, one of, one of the people chose that passage. Who was that that chose? It was uh, Whitney from St. Paul. Um, she uh, chose the passage that we heard today. But in a sense, all the things that, that were said are, are ways that we say connected. And I was also excited with them. And, uh, and, and Lily and Rebecca were there. And I said, could you share that with us tomorrow? Uh, so I'd like to invite Lily to come on up and just uh, share with us what you said yesterday. Hi, everyone. Um, okay, so I will share with you my um, reading that I chose, and then I'll explain why I chose that. So a reading from the book of Matthew. From the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see all these things, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. And what resonates with me most about this is that here God acknowledges that um, there are good things in life that are temporary, and of course we don't want the good things in our life to be temporary, but um, he basically says to accept that, and that life is temporary as well. And you know, the fig tree, the nature is temporary, and that's okay, because what's most important is that his words and his teachings and his love are never ending, and that's not temporary. A witness? Yes. yes. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then Rebecca, would you share with us what you said? Sorry. Okay, so my reading is from the book of John. We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay our lives down for one another. How does God love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need? and yet refuses help. Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this, we will know that we are from the truth. So I chose this because um, myself, I like to give back to the community and do service learning. And I think it's important that we um, 
take action and making the world a better place. Amen. And, I, and I'm right that you you uh, you had changed you changed your scripture, didn't you? That was a read last week in church, right? And it struck struck a chord. Um, so thank you, both of you, for that. It was so powerful to see 18 young people get up and, and talk about this. Um, and it's something that I think we're called to do all the time, not just when we're confirmed, and not even only when we have a lesson about that. Um, so I'd like um, to open this up. That anybody that has, it doesn't need to be a, a scripture. Oftentimes scripture is what connects us to the divine. But it can be something that has occurred in your life where you felt very connected uh, to the vine. You may or may not know what the fruit of that is. You may have seen it and can share that, or it, that, that verdict may be out. Um, and similarly, or not similarly, alternately, you know, uh, I love that reference in, that, in this story about the pruning. And I'm not really a gardener, so I'm out of my comfort zone here. But I, I think it's, it's true that you know that healthy branches need you need to keep them pruned if you want them to bear fruit, and yet the pruning process, if you're the plant, isn't very enjoyable, is it? <laughs> so there are times in our life where we may have felt we were being more pruned than rooted, and yet we can look back in hindsight and see, you know, that wasn't very pleasant to go through, but great growth came out of that. So either, either one of those, but um, and we can have a little bit of silence. I know you all, you all didn't have preparation time. Uh, but if somebody would like, when, when somebody would like to speak, just raise a hand and I'll come over with the mic. Michael. As a gay man in a loving, committed relationship, I've been told that that relationship was not from God and would not bear fruit. I'd like to witness to the fact that I have learned more about the unconditional love of Jesus Christ from my gay Jewish husband than I have from anyone else. on the verse that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings and I uh, being made conformable unto his death something like that King James but I always thought about wanting to know him and the power of his resurrection but not thinking a lot about knowing him and the fellowship of his sufferings and just trying to think about the ways that Jesus suffered. I mean, he was rejected psychologically. People turned against him. And, and he suffered physically for a few hours on the cross. But a lot of his life, the rejection of things that he suffered. And we've been through a period of, of four years or more of, of suffering. And just thinking about how that brings us to know God. And making that a prayer as well as the power of his resurrection. Thank you. Preacher's sister. See, you all are, you all, we got preachers in this pair. <laughs> <laughs> Will, take me a little bit. I think the one I like best um, is the one that connects the Old Testament to the New Testament from Job. And it says, as for me, I know my Redeemer exists. And he will come again to stand upon the dust. And I will see him with my own eyes. Powerful scripture. We oftentimes hear that at, at, uh, at funeral services. And, uh, and good to point out, it is from the Hebrew scriptures. But it really resonates with us as Christians, doesn't it? I know that my Redeemer lives. In the old days. I'll look back here. Anybody in the corner? How are we Well, if you want to talk about uh, being pruned, when I was 
uh, in my early 30s, I was sent by the Air Force to Thailand for a year, and I was separated from my family, and I was miserable. And during the entire year, I became a lay reader, I helped build an orphanage, I did all kinds of stuff, and when I look back, it was probably one of the most formative years I've ever had in my adult life. I hated every bit of it. <laughs> but it, it was, it, it, it's probably the closest thing I have to tell you about how I ever got proved. <laughs> Thank you. Absolutely. Connie. Thank you. I can identify with what Father Robert said about taking care of yourself. Um, I had cancer at 40, 50, and 60. My doctor said you have to take better care of yourself. And I turned 71, and my recent test showed uh, no cancer. Well, my favorite scripture is the part where Jesus says, In my Father's home are many mansions. I go to prepare a place for you. And as a person who's very strongly inclusionary, and in 1 John today, where God is love. Everywhere love is, God is, which means everybody's got a place up there. Amen. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Jordan? So one of my favorite verses comes from James. Uh, and this one, just a background. Um, I'm maybe a glutton for punishment, but we enjoy challenges, um, and I think uh, one of the, the gifts that I have is to be able to have significant endurance. And so this this one actually really resonated because it helps me speak with others who might be going through challenges and have the faith to, to see it through. So consider it a great joy, my brothers, whenever you experience various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance, but endurance must do its complete work so that you may be mature and complete, lacking nothing. And so the significant, significance, again, is it doesn't matter if it's another day going through trials and tribulations. Be blessed that you have the ability to grow through it and you have the strength that God is helping you tackle challenges. And it's not really seeing the very end of the challenge. It's more so it's the experience through every day until maybe one day that challenge subsides. Thank you. And Brent. Gosh, okay, can you come back? Um, in listening to some of the passages that have already been cited and uh, one of the first read, uh, I was reminded that of a passage that really spoke to me in terms of when I first read it and just feeling like, like it was speaking directly to me. Throughout my life I've been, uh, as I believe all of us in our own way have been uh, challenged. Uh, in my case, my disability cancer, alcoholism, uh, and in each event in, in taking care of myself, uh, there's a passage from the letter to the Galatians that when I first read it, just so spoke to me, and that is, let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Thank you. I need that endurance, that perseverance. I, I think for many years, my touchstone has, has again been from the Old Testament, has been Micah. Um, what does the Lord require of you? But to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with your God. And whenever I get to the point of, oh God, what do I do? It's like, oh yeah, do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly. Thank you. I love that it's in your heart. You've got it in your mind, in your heart. That's a powerful verse. Um, another way of, of sort of looking at these is if you had to share the gospel in, in one verse of scripture, what, what would you do? That, could, that, that would be a great one. Um, well, we could go on. and Thank you all. Thank you. I know it's always, well, I'm impressed with you because it's hard to think of things when you don't know what the question is going to be. You didn't know there was going to be a question. Uh, um, but this is, this is good for us to always take stock of how, how am I staying connected? And what are the things that help me stay connected? 
scripture, obviously, but also for so many people, a lot of them right back here, music. Some, some stay connected to the vine. So for some, it's service. For uh, others, it's study. Um, but to that connectedness, we're doing it so that we can stay healthy. God wants us to be healthy. Healthy plants that produce fruit. And if we don't feel like we produce fruit, we don't need to feel uh, bad about that in terms of beating ourselves up so we're more unhealthy. We need to look at how we can cultivate. How can we get connected? There are many ways to do that. And uh, being a part of this community of faith is obviously one way. So we give thanks today for the vine that roots us all together. We give special thanks for our, our young folks and for Brent, who we didn't make, we didn't make the old guy uh, stand up before we uh, <laughs> But we give thanks for the rootedness uh, that Christ gives us, uh, which is being rooted in love.